This is Lesson 5A, Point Cloud Handling in the Geomagic for SolidWorks plugin. We're going to begin this lesson by opening up an existing document, 5A, and it's going to contain two point clouds of the same object that are not aligned with one another. One of these point clouds on the right here has a lot of overspray. Uh, we had to fixture it up or jig it up so that we could scan the underside of it. And the other scan is a full scan except for the underside. The goal of this lesson is to learn how to clean up the unnecessary scan portions of the right hand side scan data and then see what we can do with point clouds uh, with regards to knocking their file size down, um, smoothing them a little bit, and converting them into a mesh object. We're going to start by recognizing that we have two different point cloud features in the feature tree as indicated by the blue point icon here. These features are also grouped into the surface bodies folder and I can change the visibility of the group or the individual point clouds by right clicking and selecting hide or by right clicking the object and saying hide everything else. I can also hide the entire group by right clicking the folder. If I right click one of the objects or if I select them independently in the feature tree here, I can see their color change from a pale green to a darker green indicating that that is the active object. If I right click this feature and select edit feature the other feature will be hidden and I'm taking to a edit features dialog box. This dialog box shows me how many points are in this point cloud, how many points I have selected and currently there are none, and then the bounding box size of that point cloud. When I'm in the edit feature tool I can right click in space and find my context menu. These are all the selection tools we have enabled for point clouds. We can select individual points by using a rectangle, a polyline, a lasso, or a paintbrush tool. Rectangle is pretty simple. Click, hold the left mouse button down and drag and release and all of the points within that selection are selected. You can now see that there are approximately 20,000 points selected in that area. If I right click and change my selection type to the polyline, this allows me a more freeform selection mode where I can click individual points and end my selection with a double click. The lasso tool allows me to draw a custom area to select by holding the left mouse button down and when I release the points inside that selection Will be selected and then the paintbrush tool allows me to make a custom selection by dragging a paintbrush or a brush of fixed diameter over the part. You'll notice that when I make a selection I'm going to go back to the rectangle selection tool and I make a selection the previous selection is removed it's deselected. If I want to continue adding more points to a selection, I can hold the shift key down and make additional selections where I desire. If I'd like to remove some of the points from a previously selected area, I can hold the control key down, make a new. If I'd like to clear all of the points that are currently selected, I can right click in space and I can select my clear selection button. I can also right click and select all of my points or if I have a selection made and right click I can invert my selection and select everything that wasn't previously selected. If I have points selected I can also right click and delete those points. The delete button on your keyboard also works. What I would like to do is rotate my part around and make a selection on all of the unwanted points. Everything that we want to keep is just this area here, 
we need to remove this block and also the floor. It's easiest to rotate around so that you're looking at the floor from the side and then we can make a right uh, a selection with our polyline or sorry our um, lasso tool to select unwanted points which is going to select all the way through the point cloud right click and delete I'll do the same thing on the block here It's usually necessary to rotate the view several times to be able to clean up all of the unwanted points. Notice that I'm only working on one point cloud at a time. If I have multiple point clouds, I need to select them and edit them individually. When I'm happy with the edits that I've made, I can hit OK to go back to the main modeling mode. With point clouds, I have a number of tools and a point cloud editing group on the toolbar. The first tool, Wrap, will convert a point cloud object to a mesh by wrapping it with a series of triangles. If I do that, and select my original point cloud to work on. I have the option of doing a conversion and I also have one option to keep the original scan data. If I hit preview, the software will begin the transition from point to mesh and I get an object in a blue color. This is a mesh object and I can show that by showing my edges. If I'm happy with the results, I can hit OK. Since I chose to keep the original point cloud, it's still here in my feature tree, but it's currently hidden. The reason for this is because we always want to work with meshes when we're doing reverse engineering in the plugin. I'm going to hide this mesh, and I'm going to focus on the second scan here. Right now, if I zoom in to a certain point, I can see the scan data start to break up and visualize the individual points. If I rotate around to the inside, I can see a yellow color, which indicates the back side of each point. Point clouds have normals indicating what side is the positive direction or the direction that the scanner saw the object. I can use the reduce noise tool to smooth my point cloud. And it's best to zoom in on an area that has a lot of curvature, like this, to visualize what the Reduce Noise tool does. I can choose whether or not my object is prismatic, or mainly geometric shapes, or freeform. And I can choose how much I would like to smooth this point cloud. For the purposes of this lesson, I'm going to choose my maximum smoothness level, and we should see these sharper corners begin to round out a little bit. If I hit preview, I can see that it has essentially had some sandpaper run over it, and the sharp corners are starting to be reduced. If I want to keep these results, I can hit OK, or I can hit cancel, and you'll see the point cloud return to its original form. I can also choose to sample my point cloud, which is to reduce the number, number of points inside of it. Sampling allows me to choose a spacing between points or a target percentage. In this case, if I exit and I right click my point cloud here and edit that, I know that I've got about 200,000 points in it. So if I go sample it, and I reduce that to 50%, I should end up with about 100,000. The curvature priority slider below will keep the density of point cloud, or the point cloud, higher in areas where there's a lot of curvature and lower in areas that don't need as many points to accurately represent that object. I'm going to keep this at the default 7. 
and hit preview. You'll notice the density of the point cloud changes and is now lower or a bit sparser. However, if I zoom in on these higher curvature areas here, I have less density where there is flatter shapes and more density where there's a higher amount of curvature. The shade points tool is not really useful right now because, but in the previous lesson we saw a black point cloud that had no normals and it was very difficult to see the object. Shading those points will help us graphically represent that point cloud visually a little bit better. In the next lesson we'll take a look at how to align point clouds and meshes with one another and convert them to a final object for reverse engineering.